Hello friends, welcome to my channel. It's time for some real heavy metal, because in this video I will build the American main bell tank, the M1A Abrams. For this build I choose the 1 to 35 scale 5 in 1 kit from Trumpeter. This 2008 big kit is relatively cheap compared to other manufacturers and as addition it comes with a lot of useful accessories. Moldings of this kit are very good and contains lots of details. The kit offers an option to build five different versions of the vehicle. The M1A1HA, M1A1 with blow blades, an M1A2, another M1A1HA with a mine roller and a M1 Panther 2. Another great accessories are options for two gun barrels, tank crew figures, toolboxes, crew personal bags, and mentioned mine rollers and plow blades. You can also choose between plastic and rubber tracks. Another great accessories are ventilation nets, copper chains, wires and ropes. The instruction manual is very detailed. It includes 36 pages. Best is to read it a couple of times before you start the assembly. And the paintings and markings guide is also very helpful. It includes five different camouflages and a color converter for Guns and Sango, Mr. Color, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrol paints. Great! I'm super excited! Let's build this menacing beast! And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. I began to build the model by cleaning the wheels from the unnecessary plastic. Well, the moldings have nice details, but the kit has some issues. Mainly, there are lots of seam lines over each part. All parts must be cleaned and it takes much longer than expected. The second issue is the plastic itself. It's much softer and sometimes too brittle. And the third issue is the fitting problem. It's not the worst scenario. I had more problems with the T80BV build, but it definitely will be problematic. Now to the wheels. I sanded down the ugly seam lines and now I etched the surface with Mr. Cement glue. The glue etched the sanded area and leaves a much smoother look. Next are the torsion bars. And again, lots of cleaning and sanding. I'd rather check out the wheels fitting. It looks quite good. If you choose this kit, be prepared for lots of dry fitting. The screws themselves are made from a very brittle rubber material. The fit is well, but beware, they are fragile and easy to crack. Now to the tracks. I decided to use the rubber ones. You need to dry fit them a couple of times. The tracks are too long. I had to cut two track pieces for a good fit. The rear side of the hull was quite good. There were no difficulties here. Unfortunately, there will be more work with fitting and puttifling on the main hull. In my opinion, some parts are way too thick, like these headlights rims. After I finish with the whole assembly, I will adjust some parts.
Let's continue with the hull assembly. Here you can see the visible fitting problems. Trust me, it was much worse. I had to cut it a couple of times, so more body filling. Before the turret itself, I assembled some additional toolboxes. The turret assembly was good, no fitting problems here. Ok, before I get to the more interesting part, let's continue on gluing more details. The 120mm cannon doesn't have any deep bore hole, so I drill out a hole with a 4mm drill. Beware, the plastic is very soft. Use less force and speed in your micro drills. Before I glue the visors and door hatches, I had to fill it a few pin marks with putty. Let's glue the other necessary details. And again, the auxiliary turret cages have the same problem, so more cleaning here. The model itself is good, but there is a lot of cleaning needed. It strongly reminds me of my T80BV build, it had the same problem. Next, I cut out a net and glue it to the bottom of the rear auxiliary cage. Later in the build, I will add some additional details like toolboxes, backpacks and jerry cans to this piece. Let's paint all the visors with translucent blue color. It will create a much interesting look. After drying, I glue the translucent blue part with PVA glue. I rather use PVA glue, because other glues could etch the surface. Next, I mask it with Mickey Mouse liquid mask.
and glue them into place. Of course, I can't forget to drill out a hole for the 50 caliber machine gun. The hull and turret assembly is complete. Anyway, I can't glue the bottom and the top of the hull right away. The wheels and tracks prevent me from doing this. If I glue them right now, I won't be able to go back when painting. It will be too complicated, so I must paint them right now. First, I cover them with Mr. Primer Surface 1000. Then, I add a black pre-shading for all the details. And, I paint the tracks with a metallic color. I decided to paint the Abrams in a desert camouflage. The actual paint is a mix of several shades of brown, sandy yellow and white. I will discuss this paint mix later in the video. Next. I paint the rubber parts of the wheels and tracks with a Mud Rebel Aqua color. The Rebel Aqua colors are ideal for this. They don't smell, have a good consistency and you can thin them with water. Next, I add a layer of glossy varnish coat from Gunze Sangha. Mostly, I use my approved Mr. Color GX100 Super Clear. For more highlighting all the details, I add a deep brown oil wash from Mick Jimenez. And I immediately wipe it out with a dry cotton swab. Let's assemble the chassis together. Let's add the rubber tracks. After some modification, the fit was very pleasant. Now I can glue the lower and upper hull part together. For a cheap trumpeter kit, the model looks good.
Let's mask the painted tracks and wheels with masking tape. I mask it right now because I don't want to overspray with primer and a camouflage color. Next, I prepare a diluted putty. I use this method very often. It's simple and fast. I just need an old paintbrush. I apply the diluted putty on the gaps and let it dry for 10 minutes. After that, I remove the excessive putty with a cotton swab soaked in leavening thinner. Before priming, I clean the model with clear alcohol. The alcohol helps to remove dirt and grease from my fingers and tools. You can also clean the model with a soapy water. It's on you. The model is ready for priming. For this purpose, I use Mr. Primer Surface 1000. After that, I add a pre-shading to highlight all panel lines and details. I want to create a chip of surface. Therefore, as a base code, I will use Rust Effects colors from Mick Jimenez. The first code must be the darkest. That's why I started to apply the old rust paint. It's very close to a chocolate brown shade. The next shades will be much lighter. Paints from Mick Jimenez can be diluted with water. They are generally fine, but you have to apply them very carefully and in several layers. After several layers of MIG paints, I added two layers of mud varnish. Now to the chipping fluid. It's necessary to add at least two layers. Chipping fluid dries very fast. After 10 minutes, you can add the second layer. For the camouflage, I will mix Mr. Color C4410, C4 Nice and Yellow, and C1 White. I like to experiment, and I decided to paint every panel separately. It's very similar to the technique of adding a black primer instead of a white or a grey one. My base coat is brown, so I only have to do is to paint every panel into a needed shade. Panel lines must always have the darkest tone.
When the camouflage painting is done, I paint all the small details with a thin paintbrush. Now to chip it. I apply a little bit of tap water on the surface of the model and let it react with the chipping fluid underneath the camel paint. After a few seconds, the camel paint starts to peel off. With an old paintbrush, I gently press and create more chips. For more control and smaller chips, I use a toothpick. Creating chips is time expensive work and you need a lot of patience. Alright, for more highlighted details such as screws and hinges, I apply a lighter sandy yellow paint. The lighter paint will give the model surface a much better contrast. Ok, chipping and painting small details with a lighter sandy yellow of paint is finished. Now I add a glossy varnish coat because it's time for the decal placement. I have some new products from Vallejo. They are quite good. I will definitely use them on my other projects. The decal fix is a little bit thick for my taste. For better work, I dilute the product with tap water. Next, I add a matte varnish coat. Let's do some weathering. In the first step, I apply a layer of oily brown filter. Practically, it's an oil wash. This filter creates a darker surface of the paint job. It will look more natural. The second step is highlighting panel lines and small details. This time I will use a dark wash from MIG Production. 
Its consistency is thicker, so for a much better work, I dilute the wash with enamel thinner. I apply the wash only on small details and try to avoid bigger surfaces. Sometimes my hand slips away and the wash can be found somewhere else. Luckily, the wash is easy to remove, or in this case, I am blended with the model surface. After blending, I apply another layer of matte varnish to seal the wash. The first step are oil paints. I will use several brown shades from burnt amber up to ochre and yellow. My goal is to achieve a wide range of shades from dark to pale. The surface of a used and weathered tank is never the same. It mostly contains dark and pale parts of the surface. In this way, the surface of the model will look much more interesting. Now to the rusty chip of details. I added a red-brown oil paint to highlight some parts. Then I blend the oil paint with enamel thinner After that, I add more orange-brown light rust and create rain trickles and stains. Actually, it's not that complicated. Working with oil paints and blending them with enamel thinner is easy and fun. Next time, I will try out my water-based weathering pencils. They are more challenging. Speaking of a challenge, I mentioned before that I will add some additionals to the model. The kit includes backpacks and tanku figures. Painting figures are a real challenge for me because I am not that skilled in it. I also add a fuel canister from my supplies of additionals. I try to check out lots of videos how to paint figures. Theory is one thing, practice is another. I tried out acrylic paints and oil paints, but it wasn't good at all. Maybe I need to buy new and more expensive paints. This time I stay with Mr. Color, Tamiya and Rebel Paints. Painting uniforms wasn't that bad, but painting faces in the skin tone plus shading was hard. I used oil paints on a matte surface. Well, the result isn't the best. I need more practice.
Let's glue the additionals to the model. For a strong bond, I use super glue. The kit also includes a copper wire. I made a bundle of utility wire out of it. Let's get back to the weathering. The fourth step is adding pigments. I mixed a sandy yellow pigment with African dust. I covered the whole bottom, tracks, wheels, left and right side scars with it. The vehicle itself is clean when it comes out of a garage or shelter. When traveling over dusty terrain, dust and dirt settles on moving parts as well on the surface and mostly in folds. After adding dust pigments, I gently blend it with the surface. For the gun barrel and turbine exhaust, I use a black pigment for AK. And I add a small amount of light rust pigment to some metal details. I didn't use the pigment fixer. I experimented and added a matte varnish instead. It worked. Pigments are sealed and have a matte surface. At the very end, I added a dark brown paint wash to the tracks, removed the liquid mats from the cupola visors, and painted the antennas black. And the Trumpeter's 135 scale M1 AYA brand's tank is finished. If I forgive the manufacturer a lot of seam lines and cleaning, the build itself was good. 
The model has small inaccuracies and needs a lot of dry fitting. The kit is cheap and has lots of offer, so if you want to build it, prepare for some lot of work. But it certainly didn't discourage me from building another tank. I hope you liked this video build. Please subscribe to my channel, like or leave a comment down below. If you are interested to see more of my work, join me on Facebook or Instagram. There's a link in the description. Thank you for watching guys, stay awesome and here's the final reveal.